Pearl Buck called it a nation within a nation. W.E.B. Du Bois characterized it as a double consciousness, being black and American. So Peter Kahn, you wrote a cultural biography of Pearl Buck. She certainly lived that dual experience as a white child and then adult in China. How did her formative experiences growing up in China affect her views of race in America? Uh, thank you. And, and may I thank Sonia for that? Mm -hmm. I would rather be going second. Um, I do think it's, it's um, I don't want to say easy to say, but it comes easily to say that Pearl Buck brought to her perceptions and experience of American racial relations what she had seen and felt living in China for most of the first 40 years of her life. That is to say, she is, as far as I know, the only white American writer of any distinction who spent 40 years as a minority person. Now, she was a privileged minority person. Let us be absolutely clear about that. To be white and a missionary daughter in China in the early part of the 20th century, by the way, it was not always privileged. There were moments like the Boxer Rebellion when missionaries were targets of assassination and so on. But nonetheless, by and large, it isn't that she was living in an impoverished or deprived or abusive uh, situation, but she was a minority person for many years. And she heard taunts about her big nose, her nose that arises from her face like the prow of a ship, and her blonde hair and her blue eyes and so on, all of which didn't fit. And, and believe me, like lots of, lots of other societies, the Chinese are proud people, and many of them among the common people were quite quick to point out her differences. But nonetheless, she did grow up bicultural, bilingual in a different country. And she was, as Laura said in one of the introductory remarks, utterly shocked when she came back to the country in the early 1930s at the age of about 40, 41, that her parents had described as the land of the free and the home of the brave. And she discovered it really wasn't quite all that was, all she expected it to be based on that kind of dream world that she had inhabited for so many years. Uh, I, I do think she was also, and this, this is the part that's a lot harder to explain, people to some extent are who they are. Um, uh, I think part of the formative influence on her was that her father was a, a Presbyterian missionary in China for over 50 years. That's the reason she was living over there. She abandoned the Christianity of her childhood and early womanhood um, and became a kind of free-spirited, spiritual, non-denominational person, but I think she inherited his missionary zeal, the zeal to improve people, not to save their souls necessarily, but to save their souls in the secular world, particularly of racial relations. And so, as, as, uh, as you've already heard, she, as it were, stepped off the boat in 1934 from China and she joined the NAACP almost immediately. Uh, this is at a time in the early 1930s when most white Americans had never heard of the NAACP. She wrote regularly for that magazine, The Crisis. She wrote for Urban League's Opportunity. She was on the board of Howard University, as you've heard. Uh, it became a lifetime, the second half of her life, the second 40 years, of evangelizing for equality. Uh, in the domain of race, in the domain of gender, by the way. We're not here really to talk much about gender, but Pearl Buck wrote many essays on the subject of women, both in China and in the United States, and their beleaguered status in many situations. So I have no explanation. I just have her biography, which suggests a journey that, that began in one culture, ended in another. Thank you, Peter.